Alrighty guys, this is Andrew, and finally today I am here with another in-depth Overwatch hero guide. Wow, that is a mouthful, guys. Uh, some of you may have come from my How to Get Better at Genji video that uh, largely went over play style and stuff, but in case if you haven't seen it, I'll go ahead and link it up here in the uh, description. But today, we'll be going over Genji's stats, weapons, abilities, as well as some neat little tricks you can do with Genji. Um, yeah, a little bit more in depth, you know, a bit more into the numbers than my previous guide on Genji. And obviously, as Overwatch ages, the stats may change, so I'll be sure to notate any sort of changes in the numbers down in the description. Anyways, let's get right into this. Genji is possibly one of the most popular of Overwatch heroes just because of his whole cool assassin ninja thing going on. Pretty much everyone tends to gravitate towards that theme, but he's one of the two Shimada brothers featured in Overwatch, and as it stands currently, he is an offensive hero with a good healthy amount of HP at 200. His first ability will be his shurikens, and the primary fire will take the form of three round bursts, doing 28 damage each shuriken in each volley, taking 0.97 seconds to complete. The reload speed is at a healthy 1.5 seconds, and the secondary fire, which is the right click, will have the same three shurikens, but in a fan formation instead of a volley, and they will shoot out that fan of shurikens every 0.73 seconds. Now some cool things about the shurikens is that they will indeed headshot, essentially doubling your damage. The volley doesn't have any sort of accuracy bloom or cone of fire. Even fanning your shurikens will not be too unpredictable. They all go in a straight line outwards. The middle shuriken will always go where your crosshair is pointing. So overall, I would say they're fairly consistent in that department. However, uh, they are pretty difficult to master in that they are projectile based and move through the air somewhat slowly. So landing these shots at farther ranges may prove pretty difficult. The volley is way more useful for precision shooting at somewhat of a distance, while the fan is more of a CQC sort of spam firing mode. Genji's second ability is going to be deflect, and essentially deflect is what it sounds like. It deflects bullets and projectiles back at the enemy. Now, uh, there are certain things that Genji cannot deflect, such as laser or plasma, whatever it is, weapons, like what Symmetra or Winston has, or even May's primary shots that spews out the ice. Not the icicle shooter, because he can actually deflect that, but the one that just freezes you. The direction of where you point your crosshair matters, as if you can line up your crosshair properly, Properly, the deflect turns from a purely defensive mood to a devastating offensive one as well. Now, headshots do work with deflect, but only with weapons that can headshot in the first place. So, uh, this excludes, for example, Farah's rocket launcher. You can't just start headshotting Farah's with their own rockets. Now, I've compiled a little clip or a collection of clips of ultimates that can be reflected. And uh, I did include some of the more obvious ones like McCree or Reaper. I guess to me those are obvious. I'm try to uh, I try to include some of the ones that were less obvious. I'm not going to include every single ulti here, but it will just sort of give you an idea of what to expect. So next up we have Genji's Swift Strike, which is essentially a move where Genji dashes forward and can even propel himself vertically into the air. It'll do 50 damage on each strike and it could go through multiple enemies. Now the cooldown is 8 seconds by default, but it will reset after every elimination. It's not completely devastating by itself, you know, but when combined or comboed with melee strikes and shuriken fans, it can be part of a really, really deadly burst damage combo. One of Genji's passive abilities that really define him is the Cyber Agility passive ability. Wow, that really rhymes. Uh, it essentially allows him to double jump as well as wall climb. Now, Hanzo can wall climb, but Hanzo can't double jump. Now, the combination of these two abilities on one hero, on Genji, essentially adds an extra dimension of gameplay that really grants Genji that hit and run type feel. It's cool to note that as Genji, you can actually triple jump by comboing a double jump into a wall climb and then jumping off the wall once more. Uh, be sure to use your double jump and wall runs in combat as well, as it will make you a much harder target to hit and your weapons will remain pretty viable as you fly through the air. They won't gain any extra bloom or anything like that. Uh, you can also chain a jump with your swift strike as well. 
Now, Genji's ultimate is his Dragon Blade, which is actually an ability that I've been getting more and more into as I play more and more Genji. Now, it'll last for 8 seconds or slash up to 9 times, and the rate of which it slashes is 2 slashes every 1.83 seconds. That sounds oddly specific, but the damage for each slash is 120, so you won't be able to one-shot anyone with it alone. But I will say though, if you combo it with a swift strike or deflect, it makes for a really, really powerful burst damage combo, especially for anyone under 300 HP or less. It also has a pretty decent range, and AoE, in my opinion, is great for when the enemy is grouped up, so keep an eye out for those Zarya ultimates. However, Genji can't just go Roid mode or anything, and doesn't really get much more HP, so using the Dragon Blade can be tricky and is best suited for when the enemy is already distracted. So how exactly do we play Genji? Well, I've actually already covered a lot of the playstyle tips in my previous video, uh, so be sure to check that out if you haven't, but the basic basic sort of premise refresher, if you will, is that you must rely on all of your abilities to do well with him. You can't exactly expect to play him like a Soldier 76 who just needs to use his gun uh, to kill people. Um, you kind of have to rely not only on your shurikens, but as well as your combo. And the basic combo, and I know there's a lot more advanced combos out there that you can kind of add on to this basic combo, but the bare bones combo that every Genji player should know is start off with a volley or fan into a melee, cancel the animation into a swift strike. And because you can animation cancel a lot of the moves in that sort of chain, this alone will do a lot of damage pretty quickly. Uh, currently it'll probably do around 164 damage if the numbers stay consistent. And that is counting if the shurikens, all three of them land, doing 84 damage, melee doing 30, and the swift strike doing 50. Another important tidbit about Genji is that you must learn to be incredibly patient. I didn't really mention this too much in the last video, but it's just something that I've <laughs> sort of realized I should start doing more, is that he has insane mobility, right, which allows him to scale almost any part of any map, so don't feel like you have to be too aggressive. You can retreat, run away if you need to, and I sort of want to address that the footage shown here in this video is really just a collection of highlights of when I'm able to go in during the chaos and quickly take out my enemies while they don't notice me. What I'm not showing is sort of the between fluff footage of me poking from the sidelines and just sort of waiting and keeping an eye on the battle, not really going in until the right moment. Now let's move into the counter for Genji, and boy does he have a lot. You know, honestly, actually, I shouldn't say that, that he has a lot um, because he counters a lot as well. Um, He's got a lot of different ways to deal with his own counters, but it all comes down to how good the Genji is. But the most obvious counters for Genji are anyone who has uh, an auto-aim ability that can't be deflected. So heroes like Symmetra or Winston can be pretty difficult, though I would say Symmetra isn't too bad if you play around smart and uh, save up your Swift Strike for that escape or the finisher. Winston, on the other hand, is, I would say, a much harder counter to deal with because he can leap to catch up with you even if you Swift Strike away, and uh, he has enough HP to tank a lot of your combo. I would say that Genji is best suited for taking out heroes with 300 HP or less. You know, don't quote me on that, it's not exact science. But just from my own experience, the more HP your target has when you're going up as Genji, uh, I would say the riskier it gets, and it gets pretty risky exponentially. Because the longer it takes for you to kill someone, the more variables start popping up. You know, like if they start being able to react to you, then you have to start factoring, you know, is this guy good enough to take me out? Or, you know, if all else fails, their teammates may come save them. So. As Genji, you definitely want to focus in on those squishier heroes They can burst down really quickly. Now, some people would say that fast heroes like Lucio or Tracer are pretty difficult for Genji, but I wouldn't say that's necessarily the case. I, I think it's kind of even, uh, especially if you're able to land a couple of lucky headshots or two and go in for that quick Swiss strike to finish them. Uh, many will also say that Genji counters McCree, or that McCree counters Genji. In my eyes, um, might catch a lot of flack for this, McCree edges out here in this fight, I'm sorry guys. And before you say that, oh Genji can deflect the flashbang, uh, most decent McCrees will flashbang the floor, which stuns Genji, you know, so you can't even reflect that, as opposed to just throwing it right at him. I also want to say that there are many instances where I throw my deflect up right when I see a McCree, and even though I hear the audio cue go off, 
I still get stunned, and I'm assuming a lot of this has to do with the netcode, so, you know, McCree versus Genji, at least for me, it's a pretty tough matchup. Uh, the other tough one for me personally is Torbjorn. Uh, his turret has some insane range and a very fast lock-on rate. And while I find that oftentimes it may not kill me outright, it definitely does do a lot of chip damage and denies me, you know, a lot of, you know, freedom as far as being able to flank someone. Just because the shurikens don't do that much damage to the turret. Uh, it, it doesn't have any sort of damage drop off, but I find that taking out a turret is pretty long and a slow and painful process. So uh, that's sort of another hero that I have difficulty to go up against. And Torbjorn himself, uh, he can also transform to like level 3 mode with his ultimate and like just one shot you with his shotgun pretty easily. And once his turret goes to level 3, you can just kind of pretty much forget about peeking your head out because that thing hurts really badly. Um, Genji is pretty well suited to take on a number of other heroes. Uh, I think the easiest ones would be squishies like Zenyatta, Mercy, or a sentry mode Bastion, you know, good old deflect for the win, or an unaware 76 or Junkrat, those are pretty easy as well. As a general rule, I tend to be a little bit more careful around tanks, like I said before, and just play a bit more hit and run if there are multiple enemies. With tanks, I tend to try to chip them down first if I am feeling really greedy, you know. I will chip them down first before going in for the kill because I know my combo can only do a limited amount of damage and I don't want to risk getting too close to a Reinhardt or a Roadhog. Anyways, I hope you guys found this guide useful, insightful, informative, what have you. Hopefully it sheds some light into Genji the Ninja Cyborg. I think that's just about it for today's video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're new to my channel, be sure to check out some of my other videos. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to leave a like. It'd be fantastic. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one.